relationships, relationships, relationships. If you are looking to be better in relationships, then this is the podcast for you. Let's go. What's up, you selfish SOBs? Welcome back to another but 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 banging me first podcast and i'm your host gerald mr b pause mace and today i'm so excited for this episode we have on our show artist and zadoria anderson let me tell you a little bit about them artists and artists and zadoria anderson are renowned relationship experts and the founders of the relationship in marriage university also known as trmu They are also the visionaries behind the Renaissance movement and serve as co-CEOs of Forever Love LLC. Originally from Virginia, they now reside in Las Vegas, Nevada. Both artists and Zadoria are proud graduates of the Virginia State University. Their successful marriage and the establishment of Forever Love are driven by their desire to address the lack of relationship education in our communities, recognizing the vital importance of effective relationships in all aspects of life. They have dedicated themselves to providing relationships, education, and consultation worldwide. Join the podcast to gain valuable insights from these experts who are passionately filling the void and meeting the demand for relationship education. I'm so excited to have artist and Zadoria on the show. Give you a little bit of background information. I met artist and his wife Zadoria at a conference or at a, a board. We had both sat on and he on, on a panel. And artist was sitting actually right next to me the entire time. And I think after three or four responses to the questions, I grabbed the mic and I immediately said, uh, everyone, I just want y'all to know that artist is going to now be my brother one of my best friends now and he and i have kept in contact i've learned over time that he's done that he's doing this type of work and i had to have him on the show and he's doing this work with his wife and anyone who's familiar with my podcast or my shows they know that i love doing shows with my wife so to watch him be able to go out and do those things is fantastic in my opinion so i'm glad that they're on the show i want to kick it off to them so that they can introduce themselves artists and zadoria tell us a little bit about yourself well my name is artist and i'm zadoria and, and we, we are, are the, the andersons. andersons hey and so we are from virginia um she being born and raised most of her life in farmville mm. the cornfield yes farmville like, like the game raised... yes <laughs> <laughs> see we're popping we out here and, and you know me being raised in the uh city in the state capital richmond uh-huh. virginia so you know but um I, I think our story begins you know at that place where without our, our parents even knowing, you know, my mom moved to uh, Richmond and her family moved to Virginia. And then uh, we ended up at the same college, but we didn't know each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went to a church in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, and her friend ended up bringing her one day. Mm-hmm. And um, long story short, I took over that ministry as the pastor and she oh, was wow. in leadership. And about five years after that, um, we developed feelings for each other. And then um, after that, we talked to our pastor about it. He said, yeah, I mean, you know, um, y'all should pursue it. And then um, after that, we got in a relationship. And then after that, I moved to Vegas. And then after that, she moved to Vegas. Six months later. Oh, wow. Yeah, she moved to Vegas six months after I did. And because um, the Lord led me out to Vegas and... Um, yeah, the rest is history. So that's kind of our journey to where we are today. We've known each other for 14 years, been together for eight years, been married five years. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate awesome. it. Appreciate <laughs> it. And what, what what do you guys do individually? Like, what do, I know you guys, I want to get into your marriage ministry and podcast and education, but what do you do uh, for work? 
So, oh, good. Oh, I work for the financial industry, um, doing financial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And also, I have um, for myself, I have a business called the Master Helper, where I'm able to help businesses, individuals with. What anything and everything. So whatever that may look like, whether it's from um, you needing um, someone to stand in to do your, say for instance, you uh, uh, a client may lo lose out on <clears throat> on someone that need, for an event. I might be able to come out and help you um, run your event if you need someone to do that, or if you need someone to do your hair, I do that. If you need someone to um, clean your house or organize things or help you with your business, like I'm the I'm the jack of all trades. So that's what oh, my business does. So, you know, I'm that's my saying. Yes, I love, <laughs> Maneuvering I, I love me a jack. I love me a jack. It took me so long because I used to feel so bad about myself because I was like, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm more of a jack of all trades. Like I don't want really want to be great at anything. I just kind of want to know a little bit about a lot. But all the yeah. all the media says that you're supposed to be an expert. So I'm like, oh no, no. Right. no. And then I oh, learned no. I learned that the quote, the end of that quote is. That, that a jack of all trades is a master of none, but a jack mm. is oftentimes better than a master. So mm. that's so that's awesome. Add that to your little to to your business model. That's your little saying. The super helper. What is, what is, the master, master helper? helper. The ma man, man. The masterhelper dot com. Yes. There you go. And we're gonna add that to the show notes for sure. Yes, artists. <laughs> Yeah, so I am in the uh, community field. So I work for a nonprofit um, um, during the day. Uh, well, it's not really during the day, but just, you know. But I work for a nonprofit where we focus on civic organization, you know, whether it's voter registration, clean energy, um, um, leg legislation, uh, workforce development, things of that nature. So it's a multifaceted company um, and organization where we do everything built around community engagement. Oh, that's awesome. So like, what, what kind of yeah. things uh, as far as community engagement goes? Because community engagement is such a, a broad term. Like what, what what's the yeah. scope of your community engagement? So the company is called uh, Faith Organizing Alliance. And um, it started out with um, a few pastors that decided to do things for the community. But the focus of our organization is four parts. Workforce development, which means mm -hmm. we get people jobs, we hire people, things of that nature. The second part is clean energy, which is my specialty in terms of my position in the company. We focus on um, making sure that clean energy initiatives are done in the uh, state of Nevada so that we can move towards a greener, cleaner, um, you know, planet, stuff like that, um, especially in the state of Nevada, because we're, mm. we're, our, our, our state is more driven with so much sunlight year round. So we're able to, oh. do, to do these things. Um, and then the uh, third thing is our legislation, where we focus every two years, we uh, focus on introducing different bills for our clean energy initiatives, stuff like that, as well as, you know, community things, community bills and stuff like that with other organizations we work with. And then lastly, but not least, but uh, voter registration. Okay. So we focus on making sure that with voter registration, people get out and register to vote. Mm. That's awesome. You guys are two individually awesome people but i brought you guys on here as a couple because you guys also have a marriage education company mm -hmm. right tell, tell me a little bit about that so forever love is the relationship education consulting firm and what we did was we created a or we created a company built on a need um and just for everybody listening, always build yourself a need-based business. Absolutely. But the thing is, um, we saw a need in the community. We realized that from the day we're born, we're taught how to do everything. Brush your teeth, tie your shoes, clean, do laundry, go to school, math, science, social studies, history, how to yeah. bounce a basketball, throw a football, kick a soccer ball, okay. right? Okay. Wood shop, uh -huh. right? Yeah. How to cook, yeah. how to clean, uh -huh. how to build a business. Yeah. Like literally. <laughs> How to do hair? Yeah. <laughs> like <going>. literally, <laughs> right. I could go on for hours of all the things we're taught. Mm -hmm. But we realized 
we're never or have never been taught from a baby how to do relationships. None. It is the only subject on the planet where there is no direct emphasis from a parent to teach a child growing up. Yeah. In school, in the educational field, nothing. Maybe when you get to college, you could take some marriage and family therapy yeah. classes. Mm -hmm. But by then, you've already jacked up ten relationships, yeah. been divorced twice, and you know. So got got a little duffel bag of bull crap to carry around, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so 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 we thought, why not create something? To where not only we can help people where they are today, whether that's single, in a relationship, complicated, married, mm -hmm. or divorced, but also create an institution educationally to where we can start doing courses in the community for teenagers, mm -hmm. oh. right? So that they can start learning these things at a young age, mm -hmm. how to mm -hmm. communicate, how to meet somebody, how to talk to somebody, how to treat someone, how to be cooperative, how to be, um, how to love, how to care, how to be considerate, how to be selfless. Like these core principle foundational things need to be taught and trained at a young age. Yes. Because if we just want to be honest, humanistically, because we're designed to be around each other and do relationships, we're going to gravitate towards them anyway. Absolutely. We're just gravitating towards them in an unhealthy way. Absolutely. So we need to train our young kids now how to do relationships because by eight, nine, ten, they already got three boyfriends, two girlfriends. I mean, yeah, straight up, straight so, up. I got so, I got four kids. <laughs> oh, from my oldest is twenty one years old, mm -hmm. and my youngest is thirteen. Now, yeah. the as a parent, me and mom, um, our kids have not. They don't do anything, but I've heard on the scuttlebutt, right? <laughs> I've heard on the grapevine that uh, we've had boyfriends, girlfriends as early as like kindergarten. I, I I would even say that my middle daughter has had a boyfriend since the ninth grade. The same boyfriend, too. They may not call each other boyfriend, right, because of our conversations and our rules that we have in our house. But that one kid is definitely... My, on my daughter's radar and has been for a very long time. So I think as a parent having to ha having education at your fingertips to have these discussions with your children at an early age, because to be honest, at, at the beginning, I just ignored it. You know, yeah. I, I, I just said, well, she's only 13. It's, it, it's, it's not going to be anything. Right. And then at yeah. 15, she sneaks out of the house and goes to a party that he's throwing. And it's like, oh, well, maybe there's something going on. I need to, if she's if, if she's willing to take penitentiary chances to go across to go across the across town, then I might need yeah. to pay a little bit more attention to both her and what she got going on. So yeah. what what what? So as as you were kind of formulating these courses out, and you you kind of honed in on teaching this to children. Um, do you have any past experiences for yourself or or in your line of work that has made you believe that this was a need or caused you to create this, to fill this need? Well, yeah. Well, let me start by saying this first. If you look at our landscape today, a lot of podcasts, YouTube channels, etc., they're making a lot of money and a lot of fame off of pinning men and women against each other. Mm -hmm. because it's what gets the ratings going. And so what happens is now in our culture, a lot of people are listening to podcasts and YouTube channels and what's, and what they're, what they're really learning is what the problem is, mm -hmm. but nobody's really talking about solution. the solution mm -hmm. and the rooted issue and how to pluck up that bad seed and mm -hmm. replant the good seed and water it so that it can produce um, what we need to produce. So oh, that's a bar. What, what, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> So now it's almost like with these courses, with these weekly classes that, so we so real quick, the relationship and marriage university was birthed out of this whole idea as well. So you got forever gotcha. love, which is the one-on-one -on -one marriage counseling, relationship counseling, singles counseling right. or coaching. And then you have the relationship and marriage university, which is the courses, the classes and the weekly um, things that we do out here locally in Vegas mm -hmm. and then virtually everywhere else. Gotcha. And so with these classes, these courses, these um, events, these seminars, et cetera, 
The goal is to help people identify issues, identify solutions, yes. identify how to date, how to be safe, how to be wise, how to choose a partner, mm. how to make sure you focus on the right things, et cetera, et cetera. Because the overall goal is, like we tell people every Thursday with our Las Vegas classes in person, we start off by telling them every Thursday, we're not here to debate opinions and we're not here to bash men and women. We're here to teach you and challenge you and help you develop relationally so that the day you start to date or get in a relationship or one day get married, you know how to function properly in a healthy way. Mm. That's our goal with these classes. It's not here to get, you know, a whole bunch of likes and a whole bunch of views. Yeah. And call people to click bait and stuff like that. That's not yeah, the goal. That that's not the work, right? That's not the work at yeah, all. Right. Like I think we let these young kids who've never been in relationships that are pretty and have beautiful hair and skin let them get on and make clips on how a, a person is supposed to live their everyday life in a 60 second clip <laughs> you know and and I, I love what you said right like they there's so much information out that pins people against each other whether that's in relationships for uh, sexual relationships or you know relationships that have to do with race or opposite sex and genders or different views and perspectives and it seems like everyone really wants the same thing right everyone desires the same thing and two different groups have two different verbiages for the same things and the confusion some somehow lies in the middle and we're trying to bridge a gap so that a safe bridge over that gap to bring people closer together what has been your success or what has been some of the conversations that you've had in these these classes as far as the miscommunications between a, a husband and wife boyfriend and girlfriend boyfriend boyfriend girlfriend girlfriend or whatever it is that you whoever it is that you cater to well i mean it's a lot <laughs> it really just depends on the subject yeah yeah you know um I think all in all, people don't know each other. Mm -hmm. mm. And what I mean by that is men don't know women and women don't know men. As much as we think we do, that's what we're, that's, if I was to, if I was to just from the outside looking in of our own classes, of our own sessions, our own clients, men don't know women or understand women and women don't mm. know men or understand men. Um, because the what because what we've learned about each other is only based on what mama told us, daddy told us, grandma told us, or, or a hurt friend. person. Mm -hmm. Or right, right. So I think once you really, uh, I, I always say this just in ministry too. Until you understand humanity, right, you won't really understand relationships, mm -hmm. right, because relationships are not designed or built just to make you happy for sure they're designed to challenge you balance you help you etc and, and show you I, show you you and show, yeah our culture has made happiness the priority and that's mm -hmm. never been the priority never the, the priority is becoming the best version of yourself so that you can be a giver <laughs> say that one more time <laughs> The goal has always been just from the design of humanity, the way God created us to become the best version of yourself so that you can be a giver. Hey, said the magic hey. words, said the magic words, because, you know, I'm, I, and obviously when we having discussions, I'm not to combat you more just to add. And when you say things like men don't know women and women don't know men, I would even say that women don't know women. They only know how they are, mm -hmm. but they don't know them. They don't know what they're capable of. And I think that's the same thing for men is that our experiences, and I'm gonna share some of my philosophy with you guys too. Don't steal it or steal it, I don't really care. Cause I believe that in relationships, relationships is kind of like a continuum, right? We go from we go from meeting someone, right? And if I meet you, we have a relationship. Now there's levels to the relationship, 
But once I meet you, we are in a relationship and that relationship has an expectation. It has a boundary. It has all of those things, because if I met you at Walmart on Tuesday and then Tuesday night, you show up at my house. I'm going to pull a pistol on you. (laughs) Our relationship ain't got there yet. It has it has it has not gotten to the place where you go pop up on me. Right. And not too many relationships in my life are like that. Right. My mama better not pop up. Well, I, on the in, on the inside, I'll say she better not, she's I, on the inside. I'll say she better not pop up, but I ain't going to say nothing if she do. <laughs> so oh, but but I think that that's how it goes. Right. Like, And we have to understand the anatomy of relationships. Right. Because so many put people put the cart before the horse. Right. You meet somebody and then you go right to sexual relationships and you haven't done any of the building steps that lets you know if you can go to the next phase. But now you're over here operating in a space that you haven't even built the ladder to get to. You just got dropped off there. It happened. It's like it's like alone. You ever watch that show that come on Hulu where they drop these people in the middle of nowhere and just be like survive. That's virtually that's that's essentially what what we do in relationships is that we meet somebody and then we drop ourselves off in the middle of committed relationships after like 30 days. And it seems like it's such a difficult thing to navigate if you don't take your time moving through the steps. Now, think about now. Go ahead. I was going to ask a question, but you already you already got the question. (laughs) <laughs> Listen, now, now, now think about the analogy you just said. You get dropped off in the middle of nowhere and say survive. Mm-hmm. If I go to college to learn about business, hypothetically, or if I go to college to learn about culinary, when I graduate and then I get hired somewhere, they're basically dropping me off in the middle of that business, mm-hmm. that kitchen, and saying, hey, we're going to train you a little bit, but listen. We hired you based on your education. Absolutely. There's a we level of expectation, right, that that you have to have. But I, I'm sorry. Let me not get in no, no, your no, message. No. no, no, no. You're good. We should be able to do that same thing relationally. Boom. If you get in a relationship, you should be able to say, all right, I graduated the relationship at marriage university. Mm-hmm. I graduated from the communication course. I passed the the in law protocol course. I right. pa- like I passed all these different courses. I I, I learned how to uh, be cooperative, how to you know work together, all this different stuff, right? How to conflict resolution. Now when you drop me off in a relationship, I know how to find my way, even through Ooh. the challenges. But imagine being dropped off in a business or a kitchen, yep. and you never learn how to cook or do business. Yep. That's what we do relationally. That's why I like that show. Because half of them, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I do this all the time, every weekend. And then one dude was like, oh, yeah, I seen this, came across the internet. And I was like, I should try it. I'm like, oh, my man didn't even make it past the first night. He said, oh, th- there was a bear right outside my tent. My man called the people at 1159 to come get him. I'm like, my man didn't even make it. The only reason why he made it an extra four hours because it took four hours for them to get to him. <laughs> so yeah so i 100 percent understand we aren't equipped to have a relationship and i'm going i'll tell my own story because i had this conversation with another one of my guests and i will say that relationships aren't the way that they used to be because like no one stays together for that long. No one stays together to wade through the BS in relationships anymore. And my guest challenged me. She was like, well, why do we have to bring so much BS into relationships? Why can't we hold off on relationships? Because, you know, full disclosure, I met my my wife. I already had a child and she had a child. When we met each other, I had a eight month old baby and she had a one and a half year old son within three months of us meeting each other. We were a family of five. That's me 
and my child, her and her child, and guess what? She pregnant. Right? We go, I, I take her to California to meet my mom because my mom never even met her. So I take her to California. I say, hey, mom, this is my new girlfriend. And also, she about to have a baby. All right. Drive home. We get in a car accident, like a severe car accident. I was thrown from the passenger side. I had this big gash along the side of my head and up my leg from being ejected out of the driver's side window for not having the seatbelt. And she crushed her ankle. I was in the hospital for like four or five days. She was in the hospital, had to have surgery and things like that. And we had a conversation once we got back together after the tragedy. And we were like, we hadn't even made the decision on if we was going to even be together for real. We, we had a conversation and was like, uh, do you want, we need to try, we're we going to have to try this because it's five of us now. And my whole motivation behind this is I don't want two baby mamas. That's a bad look for a player. So we got to make it work. Now, I do not, under any stretch of the imagination, advise anybody to do what I've done. Because although my wife and I have been together for 20 years, we've been married for 16, and we have raised four beautiful children, two in college, one going into her senior year, one starting his freshman year of high school, uh, 99% of the time that scenario fails. 99% of the time. And to be honest, mine probably should have failed on numerous occasions, but we were too stupid to leave each other. And that's not a healthy way to build a relationship. However, it was my example. My, I I'd never seen my two parents come back together. So for me, I, I had a successful relationship just because we was together. You know, so when you're teaching your classes and going through these conversations, like what are some of the misconceptions that we have around relationships and also kind of kind of draw a comparison between like my, my, my marriage today is successful. 20 years successful congratulations yeah. right but I, I i if my son came to me and told me that he was going through some of the things that i had put my wife through or some of the things that my wife had put me through i would tell him to leave right i would say that's not healthy and i'm always fascinated by that conversation between healthy and not healthy because I also was not a good person then either. And my wife staying is ultimately the largest catalyst catalyst to me being who I am today. And I have this, I don't know, I have this weird like infatuation with pain. Like everything in my mind has to be got out the mud because that's the only way to appreciate it. And I know that that's a little bit, you know, personal, right? And it's definitely not something that I would teach someone. But for me, it's like, I believe that relationships are fortified in, in the fire and being able to conflict resolute and, and you know, like, so, so like, give me some insight on, how how a person can balance some of the hardships that come with being in a relationship with anybody, knowing to stay for those things and when they should leave. Because what, what I put my wife through was enough for her, was enough for me to leave, but it wasn't for her to leave, right? So, I, yeah, talk to me about that. I'd like to hear from your wife this time. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's interesting because, mm, like, hearing you talk, you hear people talk about, you know, pain and what they've been through, their past and all those things. And I think for every relationship, it's going to be completely different. Absolutely. So the way that we go about doing things is based on individuals. You know, what are the, in, the two individuals that we're – that we're dealing with in this relationship and what does that look like for you? Mm -hmm. Because your past is gonna determine your, 
your actions in every way. So like you said, you use yourself as like for your past, it's like pain is it works for you. If you if you ain't going through the grit and through through that all through that, then that's not your your success is not gonna come out of anything else but that. But for someone else, may say for your wife, she may know that pain is not is not an option for her, and mm. she knows how to do the opposite of what it looks like. But mm. when, being able to come together as individuals, because um, even you talking about us as individuals or how, who who we are, we recognize the things that we bring to the table as individuals, mm. so that when we come together, we can we can make that the two um, become become one got you basically what is your weakness how can my how can my weakness um and his strength become make my weakness not as weak as it's supposed as it can be and how can we often vice versa so when we talk to when we have these conversations in the classes or we're talking about um you know with um couples it's always about we want to see how you as an individual thought think how mm-hmm. you how you look what your past and what you've been through and how does that uh, um, come to you in the future or your mm-hmm. present right now? So mm-hmm. bringing that all together and knowing those things and also learning about yourself and a lot of people don't know themselves. So when mm-hmm. it comes coming into a relationship, you're saying, "Oh, I want you to make me happy," or "Oh, I need you to do the things that I'm lacking so that I don't have to worry about it." But you're not holding your individual self, so there's now a a riff, or there's something happening in the relationship because you're expecting the other person to do their to do your part that what you're supposed to bring to the table in the first place. So, and all of that is like we try to the especially with the classes we try to bring in a different perspective of how you should bring yourself into the relationship looking evaluating yourself coming back to yourself first and then saying now that i know me i can tell you about me and what i'm able what i can go through what i'm able to allow to happen in our relationship together but what i'm allowing you to do so it's it's all about key uh, i keep repeating it just individual self and mm. if we work on that then we're able to now say i can come into a relationship knowing that if my flaw is i i'm late all the time i'm gonna tell you i'm late or if I don't like to um, brush my teeth in the morning, I'm gonna tell you I don't like to brush my teeth. Like oh, these that's a red things, flag. right? Flag, flag on the play. <laughs> oh, but I'm able to tell you <laughs> these things and say, "Hey, this is me. Either right. take it or leave it. And what can you do with that? Now, tell me about yourself. What mm. are you? What can I say that I'm okay with? And what can I say that?" you know, I can, I can deal with as an individual and will we be able to be compatible in that, Absolutely. in that relationship? Oh, I love that. I love, I, I love what you just said, because, you know, that takes the last thing I said a step further, which is we don't know enough about ourselves. Forget the differences between men and women. You don't even know what you should be arguing for. And I, I'd mentioned this before. It's like, and we, we, we have so much like trauma and, so many experiences that kind of shape our beliefs and then we get relationships that that of we we build relationships with people that align with those beliefs that we have built off of our past experiences and things like that and i think it's so difficult to to blend your life or your beliefs with another person if you haven't done the work for yourself to even know what they are there's been times in my marriage where I have legit argued a whole point that the 23 year old girl was adamant about, but I could give two shakes at a tail feather for it, like in real life. But I'm so used to arguing that point because I've been arguing that point for 15 years that mm-hmm. I don't even know the new rhythm. I don't even know how to be this new person in the conversation. I don't even know how to show up in this conversation as if that thing isn't true because the other person also is prepping me for it too. 
the person that I've been arguing this particular thing for 15 years about is also kind of tiptoeing around it as well. So I think it's so important that not only the first step is to know yourself. The second thing in a relationship is to be able to put yourself into words because I found that to be an issue in my marriage, which is Mm -hmm. I know that I want something right because my marriage is the only relationship where I get to have an expectation. I know that they say that there are no expectations in relationships. I get it. But I did not marry a person and chose to. I, I hear it all the time. I did not marry a person and choose this person for this person to have to be told steps one and two every single time. I got with this person because this person has it, it does the one thing that I, I like well, which is retain information and able to use that in our next encounter. And she's gotten so good at it that she probably knows me and what I'm about to do more than I do. I come downstairs. She's like, hey. It's a rock store in the fridge. Uh, I got my keys in my hand about to go get one. She's like, oh, I already did that when I dropped the kids off. I was like, bet. And those aren't expectations, meaning that she has to do them. But they are expectations because I want to be shown that she that she thinks about me and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So how do you navigate some of these the differences of our of of us knowing each other, being able to put ourselves into words so that we can effectively communicate ourselves to our partner while also still managing that little that little silver line of relationships that makes that makes that person my wife and not my friend because I don't have any expectations of my friends they're allowed to do whatever they want to my wife is not my wife goes to the usher concert in a thong bikini in a sheer dress I'm cutting up too I may not call her out on Twitter, but I'm cutting up. (laughs) Right. And that, that, and that may not be everybody, right. That may not be everybody, but for me, no, we're not going outside in the thong. Well, I'm kind of like, you wasn't there when she got dressed. Well, I'm assuming that she's out of town and he's back at home. He saw it, you know, when everybody (laughs) else saw it. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a bad look, dude. Oh, I'm, or, oh, I'm going to Twitter then too. I'm, I'm, I'm getting on. Yeah. Or I mean, or it was all planned in the first place. Probably some little, some little publicity. She came out with merchandise two days later. Yeah. Oh, bro. I'm a mother's t-shirt. Now everybody buying it up. Dang. Bro, see now I'm out on the conversations. I'm out on those things. That's why I don't like. That's why I've, I, I'm like that. Social media and media and all this other stuff is the last place we should be taking relationship yeah, advice yeah. from. I had read a comment. It was like some some women don't even like their man to wear shorts above the knee, and y'all getting upset at this man talking about this girl with a full thong on. What what what? See, the thing is, here's the reality. When, when, when Chance the Rapper was grinding on that girl mm-hmm. at the whatever them festivals is called, African Fest or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They tore him down. Did they? He's married. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Res- I respect that. You grind on another woman. You married. Boom. Boom. And she had a thong on. And she had a thong on. Yeah. Ooh. Grinding. We talk about like. Yeah. So of course that was yeah. All that. <laughs> right, so that's understandable. Like that's understandable. And then when you get to the Kiki Palmer situation, people don't want to be honest about stuff. People just want to just say whatever they feel, and that's part of the problem in our culture. Relationally, we focus too much on how we feel about things. We don't want to deal with the reality of things. And the reality is, number one, he first of all, you didn't marry her, but you had a baby by her. That's the first issue. The second issue is the fact that that happened is the fact that there was never an expectation in the first place or it was never a standard in the first place. And then on top of that, when you really break it all down, if we were to just be honest about it, no other man could have done that with a Beyonce, another woman, a Sierra or any other woman and dance with her like that, gaze in her eyes, 
without women tearing him down for doing it. Mm. But they big up the woman for doing it. And so this is the issue with our culture. Women will hypocritically celebrate each other while bashing men for doing the same thing. Men will also hypocritically bash women for doing things that they always have done. For sure. So the issue with our community is we're just hypocrites. And that's the conversation we don't want to have. Oh, well, let's have that conversation. <laughs> I want to have that conversation because that's a that's that's a very interesting point because I'm I'm, I'm trying to tread tread lightly because I I understand the conversation about it being hypocritical, right? Mm-hmm. I have I, I struggle with it being hypocritical though, right? I think it's easy for us to understand all of our reasons and and the full scope of why we feel that it's okay whether it's right or wrong right we feel that it's okay for us to do this because we think that we're a good person we trust ourselves we know we wouldn't do anything whatever it may be but yet we don't extend that same grace so to speak to anyone else especially not someone that we want to bring close right the the closer that we bring a person, the more pristine that person almost needs to be. And I'm only speaking from the male's perspective, actually from everybody's perspective. If you listen to what's going on, right? Like, like women want men that are established. No one wants to build. No one wants to grow with. No one wants to do all of those things. They want an already completed man and, and women and men want the same thing. They want a polished woman with no flaws and no baggage. Women want a polished man with no flaws and no kids, i.e. baggage. Same thing. So do you think that it's hypocrisy or a misunderstanding or maybe a I don't know how to call it a big up for yourself and not for anyone else? I'm going to go with the hypocrisy thing because I like it, but I'm trying to be a little uh, argumentative, even though I fully agree with what you're saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> the reason why I call it hypocritical is because at any point in time, we can always argue outside of a thing. But the reality is, for example, let's just go with the theory, right? Okay. Let's just take all the women who are celebrating Kiki Palmer. She's a mother. She looks good. That baby's put good weight on her. All these different things, they're celebrating her. Okay. If they were to be honest, every single individual, one of them, majority of them, I don't like to be like, you know, all, but majority of them, if their man had have done that to a celebrity woman and spun her around, checked out her cheeks in a thong, they would have had an issue with it. Mm. So the issue that we're having is from a hypocritical standpoint is when it comes to anything outside of you, people love to celebrate based on what they feel because it's all rooted in some of it is feminism. Mm -hmm. Some of it is woman Mm -hmm. empowerment. Some of it is other things. But the, but the whole gender, the general point I'm making is if that was your man, doing that to a celebrity woman in a thong, you would have had an issue with it and you would have said something, whether it's at home or publicly. Same thing for guys. If if, if your woman, which is what happened, was to do that with a celebrity man or woman or any man or any woman, right. sorry, celebrity man or any man in the club, it don't matter. You would have an issue with it. So the question becomes, why don't we use the character we try to force on somebody else internally. And we have to stop being hypocritical in the standpoint of celebrating somebody for doing something that you know you would have a problem with if it was you and your situation. And that's probably because they don't have any emotional attachment to someone else's life. Right. They don't have that's to exactly view, they don't have to view Kiki Palmer's situation emotionally. Right. Like we can look at it and say, like, everything you said is 100 percent correct. Kiki Palmer actually knows Usher. Usher knows Kiki Palmer. They 
So he obviously knows his, you know, her, her significant other or whatever it may be if they know each other. So it does kind of seem back to your point, a little bit staged with the whole thing because they all know each other. But if we're viewing it from the perspective that you are, then if Usher did that to your girl and that was your girl and Usher ain't never going to see your girl ever again in his life. And it, and it went viral. You come in and glue. I'm coming. I'm, I'm a couple. I'm, I'm, a, I'm at least going to have to have a conversation. Conversation. Right. <laughs> first off, it'd be like, <laughs> the first part of the conversation was like, uh, you didn't leave out here with your ass all out. What happened? Be- between <laughs> here and too. there. You, your butt cheeks is out. <laughs> but keep in mind, the, the, the premise of the point I'm making from the hypocritical standpoint is if if women are empowering each other in bad decision making. Mm-hmm. So if you have this this uh, if you have this group of women saying she looks beautiful, she's empowered, she's a mother, boom, boom, boom cool, that's great. But we're not really attacking the real issue. The real issue is as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, whatever, whatever the, the title is, mm-hmm. is the the attire really appropriate? Is the behavior really appropriate? I think it's only and inappropriate it because her her significant other said something. If her significant other got came to Twitter and was like looking good, babe then it wouldn't be an issue. I think the reason why that, this this com- I think the reason why this conversation is so polarizing is because he said something. And people are but co- that's, that's, Go ahead. Bowser would say that is the problem because okay. it's inappropriate even if he loved it. Because we don't let our daughters do that. We don't let See see the thing is we have to learn to be consistent across the board. Yeah. But our daughters and aren't 34-year-old women with boyfriends and children. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I and obviously I'm not I'm not trying to be facetious or anything, but like I think sometimes the issue like we take situations like that and we apply them to our personal beliefs. And then we say that they're wrong based on our personal beliefs. But they're in a relationship. You know what I mean? They're the two that's together. It's them two. Like they and what they do in their home has absolutely nothing to do with me. And if that man would have got on Twitter and said, You look beautiful, babe, then this story isn't a story. This is only a story because he went to Twitter to call out his girlfriend or his woman. Instead of having a private conversation with her. And although I understand that there are some 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 moral issues. Right. And I and I I tend to have a little more broader moral base than some, meaning that I don't care what most people do. Like I I think that they're all individually based like. If you two are in a relationship and what works for you, what what works for you may not work for me and my wife, right? But it doesn't mean that you guys are doing anything wrong. It just means that it doesn't work for for us and what we and our personalities in relationships. There are couples out here doing just fine that we would probably think is a, a, a horrible way to navigate a relationship. So in your in your guys's philosophy of relationships, do you guys believe that there is more of a standard practice of relationship or the particulars are a little bit more fluid, so to speak? Well, I'm, I'm going to let my wife go, but I, I'm going to say this first in response. We don't realize how our personal beliefs affect the masses. OK. And that's part of the issue in our community and in our culture. People who sold drugs in the 90s, they said, man, I'm just trying to make some money for my family so they can eat. Mm -hmm. 
But if we're going to talk about relationships, we have to remember we're all interconnected. I agree. What Kiki Palmer did, for an example, this is not me coming to her, they grown. It will have an effect on future relationships, period. The same way Beyonce's attire has changed the whole world as far as how women dress on a Monday. Not like going out on a Friday. We're talking about they're going to the grocery store with without pants. Like, so so the point I'm making is even though we may all have different beliefs, different perspectives, what works for us might not work for them. But we have to understand first in the grand scheme of things that generally and culturally, mm-hmm. what we do is going to inter is going to affect others inter inter interconnected wise. And that's what we don't want to talk about. But good. So so I agree with what you're saying, because I want I want to hear what your wife had to say too. Uh, I a hundred percent and I think what I'm trying to like drill out of you is the right and wrong part, right? Because I'll give you, I'll paint a different example. I got a chance over Father's Day to have a long conversation with my grandmother. It's my, the only grandmother I have alive. Uh, she came to Vegas and spent, you know, four or five days and she, you know, basically gave me, told me her whole life story. And, you know, a few years before I was able to talk to my other grandmother and she told me her life story as well. It was if 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 anyone has listened to this and have an opportunity to speak to your grandparents for at length to see how they came to be, do so. My grandmother got married at 14 years old. She was 14 years old. She had seven babies. By the time, by the time she was 20 years old. She was a, a, a mother of five. She was faithful to my grandfather for 50 years, 60 years. And it wasn't until my grandfather passed away that we found out what their relationship was like. And my grandfather, and I don't want to talk bad about my grandfather because he was my grandfather and he was a great grandfather. But my grandfather wasn't that all the time to my grandmother to the point where only now at 80 something years old she feels that she's living a life that she enjoys my mother meets my father at 13 they get married at 17 18 actually they get married at 18 19 she's pregnant by 20 they're divorced because my mom looks at her mom and says i'm not going to stay all of my life and give up all of my life to a person who doesn't do these things for me my mother and father divorce when i'm in the fourth grade fifth grade right And I'm more concerned about those examples and teaching us about what we're supposed to do in relationships than than the articles of clothing or the moral standard that another relationship is supposed to uphold for it. Because according to all of the books, scriptures and everything else, my grandmother did the right thing. She did what she was supposed to do. And she didn't enjoy any a majority of that portion of her life. I obviously like she and she loves the fact that she had her children and her family and things like that. But she did not get that companionship in love that. The world promises her. And I think. Although happiness isn't the goal, it damn sure better be a part of it or why do it? Um, good. <clears throat> so this goes back to what we talk about your source of authority, because everyone, when it comes to your relationship, what does your source of authority say? So we look at the source of authority. It can be Jesus. It can be Buddha. It can be whatever. But when you come into a relationship, there's a standard or there is a, a certain 
expectation. expectation that you expect when you come into the relationship. So mm -hmm. we don't realize that us as individuals, we um, we don't know our social authority or we don't abide by the rules, quote unquote, about what that looks like. So mm -hmm. when we when it comes to people that are in relationships, you're saying what is good and what is right or what is good, what's bad, what does a relationship supposed to look like is always based on individuals again we go back to that in that their opinion, in, in their their opinion and their beliefs yeah what they see in their relationship so we can't tell you that this is going to work for you if but if your source of authority may be different based on our beliefs or based on your beliefs it's going to look different it's going to look different but if it's working for you let that work for you but we always go back to like you said recognizing what is what are you willing to sacrifice what are you willing to put up with mm -hmm. and of course nobody should put up with someone beating them or doing these things but in for you know being in a christian or being a, a believer you have we there are certain st stipulations that in your in your marriage that you're supposed to abide by you you know some of you're saying reminded me something i was going to say earlier but i'm gonna say that and i'm gonna respond to the right and wrong thing with the right and wrong thing here's what i always teach people there are things that you're going to do that are right there's going to be things that you do that are wrong mm -hmm. but here's what everybody got to realize not everything is a right or wrong issue some things are about wisdom mm -hmm. and that's what we got to understand kiki palmer and what she wore people are going to say it was wrong based on their personal beliefs right. people are going to say it's right it's, they're going to say it's right based on, based their, on personal their personal beliefs. beliefs but what we all should have a conclusion on is it's not wise mm -hmm. because of what it can create because of what it can do interconnected relationally in our community. Same concept as whether selling drugs, pimping out women, trafficking, whatever it is, all of these different subjects, right? Because for example, when you take God out of the equation, because that's what we really community-wise deal with. If you take God out of the equation, there is no moral compass. You can do See, what you want. Nobody can call it right over. I'm going to argue that, 100% argue that. See, I'm only argue that only because our all right. The only reason why I'm going to argue this is for for a handful of reasons. Mm -hmm. We can't say that morality started 2,023 years ago. Our nature isn't to be terrible people. Our nature is exactly like you stated it before. It's interconnected. Everything that we deal with is because other people live around us. Our perception of right or wrong is created because other people tell us that. Whether that's telling you this through some form of indoctrination via religion, education, or your own search for whatever it is, your, your true meaning and purpose of your own life. But they're always validated by somebody else. They're always validated by something else. My perception of right or wrong, if I'm using the Bible, is no different than the one that I have without it. I don't want to harm anyone. I don't want to uh, get over on people. I don't want to do any of those things. And I'm not saying that I don't believe in the Bible or I don't believe in God, I'm just saying that I had that prior to even learning about it. So there there has to be like, and 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 obviously I'm, I'm trying to have tough conversations on this podcast, but there has oh, yeah. to be, there yeah, has to be a, a better explanation than just God. And the only reason why I say that is because God is only relative to the people who believe it. Now, well, I know I know that there is some other stuff that Christian people believe, but that still is only a belief held by those people who believe that stuff. 
So there right, has to think- go ahead. Oh, okay. my bad. No, I, I want to hear. Okay. Now, I was going to say the better explanation is relative also. Because we, the reason why I said it this way is like this. If you take God out the equation, right, mm-hmm. then the question is, how did anything come into, into being? Some people are going to say the Big Bang. Some people are going to say whatever. Either way, something created and gave us the nature we have whether we call it god whether we call it sand whether we call it green paper we don't come from nothing something created us something gave us our intentions our heart our character etc so to your point even if it isn't god right let's just say a person doesn't believe in god they still have the nature of god they just don't believe in him Somebody, for example, if I have a child, they can disown me for the rest of their life if they wanted to. But my DNA is still in them. I understand. And my characteristics, my likeness is is still going to be there. So whether they agree that I'm alive, whether they agree that I'm existing, whether they agree, they can deny me all day long. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change the fact that I'm still who made you. So 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 the point I'm making is, is that. I don't. I know we're not having a God conversation right now, but the point oh, well, I was simply will. trying to make. <laughs> but the point I was simply trying to make that I that I'm making, and, and this to your point too. To your point too. If we take God off the table, or whether we put him on the table, either way, when it comes to how we operate, the things we do, if there is no God then the question is, who is the determining factor for morality? Because it's either going to be personal opinion. And if I say, hey, what's wrong with raping people? Why is that wrong? Somebody's going to say, well, it is wrong. And I'm going to say, well, who told you it was wrong? And they're going to say, well, you just know it's wrong. And I'm going to say, well, why does your opinion trump mine? The question becomes, if there is no, if there, if there is no superior authority, then you can't tell me molesting somebody's wrong. Then you can't tell me wearing letting uh, a girl wearing her butt cheeks out is wrong. So we we all have to come to this 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 place where we say, okay, if I get it. Palmer, she, but right, I, I, or, I I get exactly what you're saying. I get exactly what you're saying. Grand, or granddad, for example, people can't say your granddad was wrong for cheating on his wife. So so it's these now these are the she hard stayed. conversations. I know we don't have time to do all that, but. Oh I, man, we but, we gonna but, talk, but, we gonna talk but, until but it fizzle. <laughs> but but in theory, I want people to understand is it's not always about right or wrong. Sometimes it's about wisdom. Okay. Because not everything is wrong, and that's the issue in our community. We like to tell people people are, she's not wrong for wearing that. Was it wise? I would have argued that it wasn't a wise decision. That but would be my argument. But we only know that's not wise because her boyfriend got came to Twitter. But it's because because the way because the, the way I view it is kind of like the story about the man who lost his horse. You ever heard that story? No. So man, in, there's a man in the field. He goes out to check on his animals and he realizes that his horse ran away. The town comes up and says, oh, this must be a terrible thing that happened to you that your horse ran away. And the man says, I don't know yet. We'll wait and see. A couple of days later, the horse comes back with another horse. Now he has two horses. The town comes and he says, oh, you got two horses. That must be great. He, the man says, I don't know. We'll just wait and see. Those two horses eat all of the, the, the food and he can afford it. The town comes and says, that must be terrible. And he says, I don't know. We'll just wait and see. A couple of days later, a man shows up and says, hey, I noticed you have two horses. I'll give you insert however much money and we can go on and on and on on this story. And I think what we don't always add are the experiences in that we never talk about Kiki Palmer and what she has on. If her husband doesn't shine a light on it, because in my opinion, what I do think is right or wrong is that that is a discussion that he should have with her and behind closed doors. Because we 
and no one else in our world should be taking any advice from any scenario where you only get 13 seconds worth of information. And it is not wise to take any sort of counsel. I don't care if it's T.D. Jakes. If you don't know anything about T.D. Jakes and you just see this old black dude in jeans and a button up talking, I would question all of that. The one thing that my dad taught me from the day I can remember, the one lesson that I can remember, it was challenge everything. Oh, no, not challenge. Prove everything, even what I say. And maybe that's the reason why I am the way that I am now. Very inquisitive. But my father told me to don't just believe whatever it is that you hear. So I don't I, I think for me, it's important. And I and, and obviously I'm not trying to argue. I don't, I'm going to stop saying that at some point in time and just start arguing with people. No, it's my show. It's my show. If I want to talk, I'm, if I want to argue, I'm going to argue. It's my show. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I, I I feel like Kiki Palmer isn't a good enough example for me to be deriving any sort of marriage advice from. She's not even married. So whatever they're doing don't have nothing to do with me. It has no bearing on anyone else's marriage or relationship. If anything, it'd be like, well, <laughs> Now is probably a bad time to learn that that's how your woman dressed. You already got a baby by her. Right? Facts. Like, and it, and it can goes. I, can I pick it back on that? Go ahead. Can I pick it back on that? <laughs> I like Kiki Palmer. Mm -hmm. She's talented. She's gifted. She's brilliant. She's Funny as hell. Everything that. She, and she's underrated. Yes. In every form of facet. But this is how she's always been. Yep. And 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 if you started dating her and then had a baby by her, why wasn't she good enough to put a ring on it? Now the issue is how she's dressing and acting at an Usher concert. This is the very reason you got with her. That is the very reason you got with her. The so so it 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 it, it, it gets deeper. Yeah, it does. The, it does. The issue the issue becomes and we talk about this a lot with women. Women are going to celebrate that and internalize that, how she dressed, how she behaved, all that. And then going to ask us in class and you and your sessions and other, why am I still single? True. Because what you celebrate, men don't want that. And you don't want to listen. Not long term, right? So while y'all are, so, so women are keeping each other single. Have fun. Yes. <laughs> Oh, you said that you think that's a bar. I We are. Look, man, women are keeping women single. Men are keeping men single. That's man. That crap I see on TV sometimes about what men are supposed to think and believe in and, and everything. I'm just like, this is absolutely bananas. Nobody wants to do that. Like, unfortunately, fellas, we y'all not getting 1950s again. Y'all not about to get a wife that stays at home, cooks clean, says yes, sir, drinks when you say, put on some. Have you ever read that uh, that that manual? It's like the manual for the the new age 1950s woman where it was like, make sure that you put some powder on your nose before your husband come home and that the food is warm and I'm, and the kids are presentable and ready to be seen when he comes in the door. You're not getting that ever again. That shit is never happening again, ever. And that's not a bad thing. Not with this inflation. Not I with feel, this inflation. I, exactly, because the world changes. And I think sometimes I, 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 on one end, my Christian brothers and sisters, they like to say that we're moving further and further away from the Bible. On the other end, I feel like the Bible doesn't take into consideration that the world is changing. And I don't want to say like it doesn't. I mean, like from the those particular specific things, you, we have to give a little bit up because we can't just be the homemakers anymore. Like you make 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars a year. That's not enough in this society. So you can't. So now that you can't just be the provider, you can't just be the 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 the, the dressing keeper. 
right? Your significant other of opposite sex is also assisting in those things. So I think there's a lot of... And, and, been, you know, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say the Bible's always been misinterpreted about that. The Bible doesn't... The Bible oh, yeah, isn't telling we, people... Let's, we're going to get into the misinterpret. That's a whole different podcast because we could talk about a whole <laughs> bunch of misinterpretations and a whole bunch of... Because like I said, my pops is... I grew up seven day at Venice, something like that. Okay. So I celebrated like Feast of Tabernacles and Days of Unleavened Bread and a lot of the Old Testament the stuff, right? Uh, yeah, my dad was like, yeah, we like, I'm th third grade, Christmas time in the back doing math problems because I can't even color the Santa Claus. I can't cover, I can't color the pumpkins. You know what I mean? Doing Halloween. I'm not, we're not participating in none of that, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a very different perspective of what right and wrong is and how we have changed these laws throughout time to accommodate more people. Because the basic law of the Bible is the same everywhere. It's the same in the Bible. It's the same in the in, in every religious text. It's also the same in nature. It's the same in relationships. It's the same in everything. From the beginning of that Bible to the end, even in the middle, if you if you're a Christian and you read the, the New Testament as well, because that's the fulfilling of the Old Testament, that is no different than our lives as people. One day we're just here. And I think sometimes we argue so much about the beginning and the end and the creator that we miss the part where the Bible says it's always been here. Science says it's always been here and we are a part of it, but we've always been here because according to science, matter cannot be destroyed or created. The Bible says that, too. They just say people. And people are matter. We the energy is always recycled. And I don't want to get off on this whole like dichotomy because I, I think a lot of times you know, people who just believe the Bible, they want to argue it as if I'm like saying that it's wrong. And really, I'm saying that it's it's true. I have a different view as far as the stories behind it being true or whatever, as if it doesn't matter because the premise of the story is applicable in every aspect of life. And I think. We yeah, I, I not we, on. but I think people have to do a better job of extrapolating the concepts of the Bible, because those are the things that matter throughout time. Believing if we've got every single animal on a boat has no bearing on the principles that you would have to derive from that to apply to your life. Yeah, I, just, I think it's important that people know that whether you subscribe to the scriptures or not, or most of all, let me just say about the scriptures, people misinterpret it just from the standpoint of, and I'm tying this into relationships. People take their ideology that the man is supposed to provide because of the scriptures. But it's not just about the man providing financially. That's not what it's trying to explain. It's really about the man and the woman providing for their household. And, and that's what we got to get back to, understanding that we both play a vital role together in harmony and unison mm -hmm. so that the family is sustained. Absolutely. And if the family is sustained, the community improves. And that's the whole goal of our business, our school, everything. We have a, we have a mission to really change the community and build the community. But the way you do it is you got to start in the home and relationships got to come back together with between man and female so that they can have healthy marriage for the children. And then as you have five marriages, 10 marriages, 20 marriages, 30, 40, 50, 80 in a community, now that village being a healthy community together because it takes a village to raise a child. Well, also it takes a village to keep a marriage together. That's why we need couples to hang out with who have also have healthy relationships. Women need to hang with, sorry, wives need to hang with wives, husbands with husbands. Like all of these things are important. So 
I agree. I, I, I think there's so much there's so much to be said and could be said. At the end of the day, what we want is for people to find what works for them in their current situation as they continue the journey to learn and understand and grow and mature and gain wisdom and things like that. You know, none of this stuff happens overnight. And I don't want and we are, we're not going to solve the uh, all of Christianity and the world's problems in, in an hour conversation on my podcast. But I think having these conversations and not being afraid to have these conversations are extremely important. And you need to have these conversations in every relationship that you're in. Like, I don't know. I know everybody out here listening knows that, you know, artists is on the podcast. But what they don't know is that I made artists my friend. Uh, I, 30 minutes into meeting him he didn't know that yet i kept telling him he he didn't reciprocate it yet but it's it's coming i even texted oh, him you once my, a you month my you my i text him once you a month brother. and everything i when i say <laughs> i i create relationships i create relationships so now, let me say this let me our say artist this. is my we sat on a panel together me and artists and i told him every time i got the mic that this was my friend. I just want y'all to know that me and artists, we like brothers now. And because we, we yeah. believe the same things, we brothers. So I am extremely appreciative of this conversation to continue our brotherhood and yeah. sisterhood with your wife. I, we definitely got to get together and, and, and spend yeah. some, some, com, me, some, some fellowship me, time together. <laughs> let me say this really quick. I want to celebrate you and your marriage. Yes. Thank you. Because Thank you. your story your story deserves to be celebrated, heard, appreciated, because what you did, what your wife did, what y'all created, what y'all displayed for your children, that's the 1% and it's honorable. Yeah. And it yeah. needs to be publicly said and you need to hear somebody else celebrate you and your wife yeah. for what you do, what you've done, the story you have, the sacrifices y'all made, the effort it took, the time it took, the work it took. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate y'all. Y'all an inspiration to us as well. Definitely. Definitely. Hey, well, I appreciate you. So now that means I gotta I gotta come teach a class or something or get a guest spot talking or something. <laughs> I yeah. got you. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and real quick, I wanna share something with you guys before we before we wrap this up. And I, it's kind of to encomp encapsulate everything that we've been talking about. I'm in the process of writing a book. It's called The Sum of Me, and I believe that there are seven areas that make us who we are. And you guys touched on a whole bunch of them. Uh, those, those areas are what makes me me are my experiences and my perception of my experiences, right? Is that we are all today as we sit right now, the accumulation of all the things that we've gone through. And there's an excellent book out there that kind of helped me sort this out. It's called What Happened to You by Oprah Winfrey. If you get a chance to read that book, it is an excellent book. The next thing is our beliefs, because it is our experiences that then shapes what we believe. Right. And then our relationships, because our relationships supports the beliefs that our experiences have created. Right. It, and that that draws a, a light for real in marriage. Right. Is that based on your experiences and what you believe that should weed out a nice chunk of people that you are not compatible with, whether that's friendship, marriage, or anything else. The next thing is health. I might change the verbiage of this because I don't actually mean your physical health. I mean your health, physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, all of those things. How are those things? And allow that to be the compass to then signal if there is a problem in your experiences, your beliefs, or your relationships. The next one is going to be your resiliency, which is how you respond in tough situations, i.e. conflict in relationships, trauma in your experiences, or faulty or a faulty belief system that's created from that, right? If you've been hurt by the first 10 men you've ever been with, and now you're 40 years old thinking all men ain't crap. That's probably a faulty belief system. However, it's rooted in real life experiences, which is why we have to take yeah. it serious. The next thing is the growth, right? What are the actual tools and tips that fit you and your lifestyle that addresses above? 
that addresses your trauma, that addresses your physical health, your financial health? What are the habits and the courses and education and things that you need to continue to grow? And then the last thing will be your purpose. Your purpose is like the captain of the ship. If you if you if you take off a plane, for, I don't know if you've read uh, Atomic Habits or not, but James Clear describes this pretty well in his book, Atomic Habits. If you were to fly from L.A. to New York and altered the nose of the plane by three degrees, it end up in D.C. And you don't want to wait till you get an hour out to realize that you nowhere close to New York. So your purpose should act as your navigator to make sure that everything else is in, is in alignment. Your purpose is also where your actions are stored as well. Right. So those are my seven things that I believe make us up as we, you know, go out on this journey to find out who we are. Those seven spaces are a very good place to start to learn. And if there's anything that you if you have no place to start, start with your experiences and do three things. Or is it three things? Yeah, three things. Reconcile, accept or protect. You have to go back in your past and reconcile all of that stuff in the past. Good, bad or indifferent. Right. Even some of the things you 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 you're good in football from from five years old to 18 and you ain't been good at anything since. And now you keep telling everybody how good you are at stuff, but you ain't been good since since ninth grade. You know what I mean? We have to go back and re and reevaluate our perceptions of our experiences. And then we need to reconcile them. I also believe that everything can be reconciled. Some things just happen to us and it's trash, right? You, you, you get in the car accident and break your leg that it just happened to you, just a part of it. And we have to learn to accept those parts of us. And then the last thing is to protect because everything can't be reconciled and everything can't be accepted. I was molested at 13 years old. That stuff has carried with me and it has been the source of a lot of issues. The only thing that I can do is protect myself from how that makes me feel because my feelings can't be the thing that guides what actually happens in my life. I have to protect myself. We call those boundaries, right? So if I have to protect myself from personal trauma, some of my, I, I, I'm also, I also used to be an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm like three years sober and the boundaries of being three years sober is I don't hang out with the people that I used to drink with all the time. I don't, I don't keep tons of alcohol. Now, I'm not saying I don't have a glass of wine here or a beer at dinner here or something, whatever it may be. But I used to be an everyday irk and jerk drinker because I'm also from the hood. So irk and jerk is like four dollars. It's an easy buzz. So I'm recovering from that. So I had to set those boundaries because I'm not at a place to accept it or reconcile it. So those three tips, if there's anything that. You know, of what I said that you can utilize in your programs by all means, you know, I have the recording. So the world knows I said it to you first. If you try to make a million dollars on it. <laughs> but but I think that that is so important because my journey in life has led me to help people find out who they were, because I thought I was a strong person and I have the accolades to prove it. Right. I have. I, I spent eight years in the Marine Corps. I have a bachelor's. I have an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and two master's degrees. I have. I, I have a blended family. I raised another man's son. I've done all of these things. However, I still didn't know who I was. And because I didn't know who I was, I didn't know how to show up in conversations with my wife. I didn't even know how to argue for myself. I didn't even know when I should stand up for myself. I was taking my cues from other people and other things, social media, the stuff that my dad told me when I was 13 years old that he probably doesn't even believe to this day, but I'm just holding on to it because I don't have anything to replace it with because I haven't learned it. It's all of those things. And my, my journey on this, 
this planet as I can see it for the future is to help people get more in touch with themselves and have a better understanding of who they are and how to process and work through those things so that they can then show up and be able to accept the teachings of of some of these other things and accept the conversations, the tough conversations that you have to have because you don't take offense to it. So I want to I, I want to also appreciate you two for coming on to the show. There aren't a lot of young married couples. There aren't a lot of young black married couples. My wife was supposed to come in here, but my wife has to do work stuff, i.e. children, basketball camps and all this other stuff. And she's given me the opportunity to sit here on this show and listen to a beautiful couple with two beautiful souls and voices. And I can't wait to actually work alongside you guys because I love what you do. I already told the world that ours was my brother and we was <laughs> we was going to be best friends. I did that with Quentin, too. When I met him, I said, like, bro, you're going to be my best friend. And now we him, me and him thick as thieves. <laughs> so I want to appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being on the show. Your voice is necessary in the community. Your voice is necessary in this space. There aren't a lot of positive positive married couples that don't look like my grandpa. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the old and this tall slender man with the gray beard and gray flat top doesn't do it for me. You know, he does, <laughs> I don't feel like that guy understands what I'm going through, <laughs> but I love everything that you guys are doing. So tell us where the audience can find you guys if they want more information. How can they get involved with you and your services? Uh, give us give us the gambit. Tell them the best episode. Um, well, um, like I was stating earlier, if you want to find me or book me, you'd be your master helper. You can find me at themasterhelper.com. Simple. Um, inbox me and I'll be able to do all the things that I can for you. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And um, if you want to um, get involved with any of our relational um, things, whether it's the school, whether it's one-on-one -on -one coaching and counseling, um, you can just go to artistanderson.com, A-R-T-I-S-T, Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N.com. And from there, you can find everything that we have going on. The Relationship and Marriage University, Forever Love, as well as the Renaissance Movement. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you again. And all of this information, as well as some of the stuff that we talked about throughout our conversation, all of that stuff will be in the show notes. So check that out and make sure you um, all register for my newsletter called Selfish Sundays. Thank you, guys. Mm. Artists. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. Appreciate you. <laughs> I'm Zadoria. Blank. Zadoria. I'm like, I can't believe I just did yes. that. I'm, I'm totally editing that out. So thank you, Artist and Zadoria, for being on the show. Because <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> it was an honor, man. It was Absolutely. a great conversation, man. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. <laughs>